Today on rumblestrip.net and 10 minute test drive, it's part two of our experience with the Toyota Highlander. Today we're having a look at the limited edition where previously we did the XLE. Uh, we've taken a 500 plus mile trip in it. Ha do we feel the same thing about the limited as we did at the XLE, which we did mostly city driving in? Uh, that's what we're gonna find out here today on rumblestrip.net and 10 minute test drive. So with the limited edition, or the limited trim level of the Highlander, most of what we said in the XLE still holds true. It's a very good three-row crossover, and it's understandable why they sell 200,000 plus things, plus of the, 200,000 plus units of these a year. Um, but again, different driving environment uh, on a couple different levels. Uh, which we'll touch on here in a second, give you a little bit of a different experience. But the biggest issue was not just the type of driving we did, which was more highway than city. It was the time of year. So we're roughly six weeks later now from when we drove the XLE. And it's winter, full on. Um, not only where we are here in Metro Detroit, uh, where hope uh, background's a little blown out, so maybe a little hard to tell with the sun. Uh, but there's plenty of snow on the ground, and it's been in the uh, high single and low double digit temperatures. Uh, we took a trip to uh, we took a trip what we call here in Michigan up north. We went to the Leelanau Peninsula, which if you look at your hand, you know like Michigan is the hand. Take your little finger here and spread it out a little bit, and then go about halfway up here. Uh, that's where we went. That's called Sutton's Bay. Cool little town, uh, touristy. Uh, we stayed at this place called the uh, 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 <laughs> We were just there and I can't think of it. Uh, Black Farm. Black Farms? Something like that. I'll, I'll annotate it. But anyways, uh, it's a winery up north. It's actually decent wine. Uh, Jeff Glucker would like it. I'll just say that. Uh, and they also have a small inn there with 10 rooms and we stayed up there for a couple days just sort of as a after Christmas getaway after having to deal with family. So, it, I joke, uh, mostly. <laughs> um, so it's, you know, 240 miles or so, 250 miles to get up there and did a split of, you know, two, three and four lane highway versus two lane um, rural highway or rural, you know, uh, state highway, I guess is a better way to put it. Uh, you know, and this, it, this thing rides wonderfully. It really is a very comfortable vehicle to do a lot of miles and never thought for a moment like, oh, this is uncomfortable. I'm looking to be driving something different. This was fine. It was very comfortable. Um, on the roads up there, by the time we were up there, they had a much more snow. You get a lot of lake effect snow up there. And so the roads weren't always in the best of conditions. And you get to these passing lane areas, which are very important because uh, people, you'd think people who live up north would know how to drive, but hmm, a lot of people still very afraid to be driving those conditions. They think they're still driving their 72 LTDs on bias ply tires in the winter rather than modern vehicles with modern rubber. And by the way, we do need to circle back to that modern rubber issue. Um, driving on roads that you're driving on the part of the road to pass where it was kind of snow covered and uh, traction was a little, mm, you're not sure? This did fine. Let's circle to that on a uh, little side note here. In this vehicle, you can lock the center diff. All right, and I do, I do put that in air quotes. It's an electronic deal, and it also cuts off 
at about 25 miles an hour. Is that a big deal? Up there it was. Uh, driving on some of the roads up there, you wanted that little extra available traction at a little higher speed because you needed to drive a little higher speed, but at around 25 miles an hour, it seems to turn itself off. The engineers and programmers at Toyota will tell you they have an algorithm, their algorithm is correct, and perhaps for most of America it is. We're in northern Michigan, if you live in the mountain areas, if you live in upper New England, you might have a different opinion. Uh, it was fine, we got along without it, but just it was nice to have under the 25 miles an hour. Uh, once we got up there, uh, we got to experience full-on uh, Michigan up north winter with lake effect snow and blowing snow where you could see about 20 feet in front of you past your car. This handled great, mostly. Um, and I want to here's why I want to circle to the modern tires. This has a set of Bridgestone tires on it, and they are do okay mostly, but they are still an eco tire and marked as such. Most of the eco tires we've driven don't necessarily do the best in cold or in cold temperatures or snowy conditions. This did okay, but when it was, you know, very like two, four degrees up there and negative with the wind chill, uh, it, it slid around on areas it shouldn't have, okay? I mean, and it wasn't that there was ice underneath, it was just snow and we weren't going quickly, uh, but it wasn't the most sure-footed. Again, that's the Eco tires. It's not necessarily a vehicle. It's just the tires it's equipped on uh, for, you know, the reasons that Toyota has. Where again, where most of America isn't going to be driving in those conditions very often, if at all. So 90%, 98% of the time, they're probably fine. Uh, and in, uh, like today, it's uh, 18 degrees right now. The roads have cleared. They're melted and been salted. And this seems to, they seem to be just fine. A lot of highway driving up there and back, as we said. Coming back, we did mostly highway just to stay off the uh, state road, state uh, highways uh, because of lake effect snow and the amount of plowing, which was probably the right decision. Got on the highways and this thing trucked along. Uh, 85, 90 miles an hour, turning 22, 2300 RPM. It was great. Uh, those of you who are going to be safety sallies and like crap your drawers over the speed, we were being passed going 85. Okay? Just saying. And those of you who live in Michigan and take trips up north and go up north and come back down know exactly what I'm talking about on 75. And if you want to chime in on the comments and say he's correct, please do. Um, one thing we did notice, uh, and what this limited trim comes with, is this very large panoramic sunroof, which is nice most of the time. However, once you get above about 60, 65 miles an hour, it generates a lot of wind noise. So much so that my wife kept asking, uh, is, there, is there a window open? Like, is there a window cracked? That's how loud it was. And that's unfortunate. And I checked everything multiple times. Everything was closed. Uh, you closed the sunshade and it made it a little bit better, but it was still very audible. Uh, 60, 65 miles an hour, I mean, that's a speed that most people are going to be driving it on the highway, so that's a bit of an issue. Uh, as equipped, this thing really has, like, I think, one option, which is carpeted floor mats, whatever. It comes in at a little over 48 grand. Uh, in our XLE trim, that was 43. Do I see a big difference between those two for that $5,000 difference? Uh, it comes with memory seats, you know, so multi, uh, two, uh, two different areas where you can set your seats for memory and the panoramic sunroof. And I think there's a couple little minor interior trim choice changes and that's about it. So should you jump up to the limited? I don't see the point. I mean, the sunroof is nice, nice to have, but the, and, and normally I would say in a vehicle like this, just get this cause it, it's nice. It lets the sun in and especially, um, in winter, it's nice just to have as much sunlight in a vehicle as you can. Uh, but it generated so much wind noise, I might not even opt for that. I might even discourage people away from it. So have it, have it at that. One other thing we wanted to note in here as well, 
and this is a consistent gripe with us with Toyotas when we drive them in the winter, and that is the heated seats. Uh, they come up to temperature incredibly slowly, and the temp their top temperature is nowhere near what it needs to be. And we find this interesting, given that Toyota has one of you know their one of their major engineering centers or the, their major U.S. engineering center is located in Metro Detroit. It, they experience cold weather. I don't know if there is a reason they are significantly slower to, to warm up and don't come up to near the temperature that anyone else in the industry does. I'm sure they have their reasons, but given that we had single degree temperatures, um, it took a long time for the seats to come up to temperature. And what I'm saying is 15 minutes into driving, the seat was still not warm. Uh, maybe it's not an issue for you in this part of the country for multiple months of the year. It is. The other item we wanted to touch on too was fuel economy going up. We got about just about 19 on the way back right at 20. That is under what it's uh, rated at. We were dri uh, driving a little bit higher speed than maybe is EPA standard, but it's at a speed which uh, most people around here drive at. Uh, winter conditions certainly do have an effect, and again, single digit temperatures also are an issue. 20 miles to the gallon is, you know, if you if you buying this vehicle, you're not expecting much. It's under EPA, at least as, as, as we tested it. You know, just take that as a, as a data point. A uh, little disappointed, though, to, uh, to be honest. All in all, the limited edition or the limited trim version of, of this Highlander was fine. Uh, it did a great job of transporting my wife, uh, you know, on, on our trip and enjoyed it. As we said, it was comfortable. Do I see much benefit of choosing this trim over the XLE? I don't. I think you'll get 99% of the uh, XL. You can get 99% of it with the XLE. The audio system and the JBL green system, it's, as we said in the XLE, it's okay. It's fine for everyone who's going to be buying this. They won't. It, it's good enough, right? They're not going to care that it could be a lot better, but it's fine. Um, the Intune system in here, it's okay. The nav system does need an update. Um, it was confused on some highways, kept giving us some interesting places to turn, but we knew a little better, so we just did our own thing. It, it's fine, it, it, it's okay. It's a couple years out of date probably uh, as far as just interface and what's, what's uh, best of breed right now. Most people are just going to use Waze or Google Maps or Apple Maps or whatever they use rather than the built-in, but it's there if you want it. All in all, Highlander, it was it was good. Uh, glad to have sampled the two different trim levels just to see that there really isn't that much of a difference between the two. Sampled it in two different environments here, full-on winter, and it did excellent. Would change the tires. Uh, given the opportunity, if you're going to own this for a while, don't go with the OEM replacements. Get some uh, different tires if you live in a place where you actually experience winter for multiple uh, months at a time. And uh, overall, yeah, good. Uh, enjoyed it. Understand why it sells so well. And if you're in the market, this is definitely this definitely should be on your shortlist. Is that Jake? Nope, that's not Jake.